What's up YouTube, I'm just another guy and welcome back to Gibraltar United. So the second qualifying fave, we've got Tel Aviv today. We're on TV as well for the first leg, which is an additional 12k into the bank for us, which is good, but I want to see a good performance today. Now we've got a bit of transfer news to go through first. Uh, one of them is of course that we did bring in the goalkeeper I mentioned. Jordan Smith is actually £250 a week, which just emphasises how small of a budget he, or how small of a wage he's currently on, uh, or just to emphasise it right now. Uh, is that our other goalkeeper is on £275 a week. And apparently, look look at the quality. We'll actually compare the players right now um, by having a look at Luis. Look at that. You know, you can see he's a better player and if he's on less wage. And former Burnley trainee, played quite a bit in, um, in the conference a few years back. Actually played in the Premier League on one occasion. Conceded four goals in a terrible game, but... As someone probably like 18 at the time, it's quite a hard ask to do that unless you're a really good goalkeeper. But yeah, it's a lot better than what we've previously had. Uh, and that's the only guy we've had brought in. Apart from that, we've, um, of course, the people were released who uh, contracts were expiring. O'Donoghue was released. Uh, Burgess was released. Uh, Edwards went out on loan, a youngster. And also Brian Smith, the young striker who's been our third choice striker now for the past few years. We sold him for 5k to... Um, Lincoln, but there are a lot of clauses involved in this. I think they have to give us £3,000 over the next year. Uh, once he plays 30 games for them in the league, we'll receive like 2k. Once he plays 10 international games, we'll receive a set amount of money. Once he scores a set amount of goals, we'll get a set amount of money. So there are a lot of clauses. Overall, it totaled up to about £10,000, which was less than his value. His value was 12, but I thought, you know what? I'm happy to just accept that. This guy's not not really going to, going to become anything here. Might as well go out and play some football and maybe benefit the Gibraltar national team. So I am still thinking the national team is just that they can't really play for me. You know, if they can go elsewhere and play football, I'd be happy with that. And they are right now. One of them is going out there. So... Uh, that's the news surrounding transfers. Now, we've got a bit of squad news as well. So, Portillo, who is our first choice left back and our only senior left back in the side, picked up an injury one day before this game. Quite literally, if I go on my inbox, there we go, the 12th of July, picked up an injury in training following a robust challenge, dislocated his shoulder, will be out for two months, two to three months, expected two months. So, yeah, that's not great. <laughs> What it does mean is Ruddy Ombondo, Ibondo, sorry, he goes out onto the left hand side and Perez comes onto the right hand side and we've got two youngsters on the bench in defence, which means if we get an injury to that defence, we're bringing on some people who aren't very experienced. But not necessarily bad. But yeah, let's go into this game. So 13,000 people, 737 are going to be here today. I don't actually know if that's the highest ever attendance we've played in front of. Maybe. I don't know. We can have a look after the match. Uh, if we go through, of course, and if, in, if I'm in a good mood. But for now, we won't really care about that. So the team for today is Smith in goal, Perez right back, Amari and Jones centre back, and Ibondo at left back. Right midfield, you have Alvero. Centre mid, we have Baldwin and Ojedi, Ojeda. And left attacking, or left mid, sorry, not left attacking mid. Left mid is Moody. Up front, we have Sanchez playing the target man role and Callum Gregory playing the advanced forward role. I purposely did that. I haven't made a mistake there. Don't worry. Uh, this is the 4-4-2 Gibraltar Europe. What it is, I decided to go 4-4-2 this year. I just decided that's best to do. We should go out there, play our game, and you know, let's see what we do. We had a decent second leg against TNS before when we played 4-4-2 against Tel Aviv a, a few years back. We only lost 1-0. Who's to say we can't do it now with a better team? We've got a counter mentality on with a flexible team shape. Team instructions are to retain possession, whip crosses in, play wider, drop deeper, get stuck in, close down more, and lower the tempo. Uh, in terms of player instructions, we've got a few on. Goalkeeper has just got to distribute the fullbacks to roll it out. Uh, both fullbacks have to shoot left often and run wide with ball. Centre backs have nothing. Uh, wingers both have to cross uh, to close down more often and cross aim for far post. Both of them have that on. Uh, deep line player maker has to close down more. Apart from that, he's got nothing. Uh, action. Yeah, I'm happy with that, actually, yeah. Uh, advanced player maker has to close down more, roam from position, and also cross more often when he's out wide. Our target man has been told to close down more and to move into channels. Uh, I chose Sanchez because I just feel he's a better target man, and I'd rather have a really good target man than a really good advanced forward. And also advanced forward in Callum Gregory, we have him to close down more and to hold up the ball because he is a target man as well, partly, which means he should do the job of holding up the ball pretty well. So the bench as well is Santos Lewis, Lee Clark, Stefan Balestro, Sean Montgomery, Wayne Owens, Terry Brown, and Jason Colling. 
let's jump into this. Let's go in. Let's see what we can do. Three numbers are being handed out today. Moody can pick up number 21. Uh, Clark can pick up, or Smith can pick up 13. And Clark can pick up 23. Let's go. Let's see what we can do. Come on, Gibraltar United. Let's do this. Apparently, we've got the top goal scorers in the Champions League. I don't know why that is. Because other teams did score in the previous round, but we're the only ones up on that list. Um, he thinks Tel Aviv have enough to secure a win against Gibraltar United. They feel the absence of Castro and Portillo are going to be hard hit for us. So, they've gone out there with a 5-3-2. We're going to... Let me just apply the advice of you and see what you will do. I like what you do. Uh, fly, do the assistant, do that. And let's go. Let's do this. Champions League, second qualifying phase. Tel Aviv, five years since we last played them. Let's see what happens. See if we pull up a better a fight. I should say, if we concede in the first two minutes, I might cry. <laughs> uh, I already previously mentioned this is on TV. That's uh, positive. Uh, Nick Capacity Stadium as well, which is nice to see. I think we, apparently we brought a, a decent-sized crowd, which again is really good. Here's Moody with the ball. Playing the ball forward, it's Gregory. Playing it to Stefan. Oh, my, uh, Sanchez, sorry. I don't know where Stefan came from. That's the centre-back's first name on the bench. <laughs> but Sanchez should have scored. We should be 1-0 up. That was a really good ball forward. Here's Smith. Smith, calm down. I don't know who you think you are, but get back in your goal, please. <laughs> we still got the ball, though. Jeddah trying to do something with it and actually gives the ball away in the process. And now we've got to watch out because they can pass the ball around here. They're finding gaps. They get it in the box and it is a brilliant save from Smith. Really well classed. First game I've been able to see him. And to perform a save like that, that £250 a week might pay itself off from that save. I don't know. We'll see how we go. <laughs> Still a long, long way to go in this match. And it's Tel Aviv in the box and it's Smith yet again with a pretty decent save. That's the third clear cut opportunity Tel Aviv have missed in this match. Pretty evenly fought match. Uh, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to change from a controlled mentality to from a counter mentality to a controlled mentality, and we'll just see how that goes for the next 20 or 10, 20 minutes. We'll just see if we get any more in the game. We've actually gained a lot more of a possession doing that, and I think I'll keep it for controlled for now. So uh, Sanchez not having a particularly great game. What I may do actually uh, is we'll swap you two around, and we'll do the team talk then. And we'll just uh, calmly tell you quickly. Well, you seem composed. You just let's hope he just gets a reaction because the rest of the team reacts well. But second half, nil nil still away from home. I mean, you could argue it's, it's good because we've not conceded, but away goals are crucial in the Champions League, and we ideally need one. Here is Moody. Ah, oh, Moody, I would have expected you to get that. They've got the ball in the box yet again, and they do manage to thump this one home. They managed to get the goal they've been after. One nil in the 54th minute. Not really been able to pose much of a threat us. Um, I, I was thinking maybe I'll go attacking for a spell. I might go attacking for a spell. Um, 55 minutes into the game, we'll go attacking. Uh, we'll have a look at how that does on the match stats. Of course, if there are a load of highlights for Tel Aviv, we know to change it ASAP. Let's hope we don't concede here. Actually, Avara gets a block in, but it's not enough to win the ball back. And the ball's whipped in, and it is Smith yet again with a good save. Then balls are coming in dangerously from the wings, and it is Smith time and time again now saving us from them opportunities. Uh, we'll bring Coling on because Sanchez isn't having a good game. We'll take Moody off and bring Owens on. And we'll bring Terry Brown on as well. We'll bring on the three lads who have played for this club before. Since going attacking, we've actually not looked too badly. In fact, let me cancel these changes quickly because we've got a highlight here. Let's see what we can do with it. Here's Moody with the ball. Uh, running with it. Not doing too badly. Brilliant ball over the top there to Alvaro. Been brought down in the box. It's a penalty. Gets in there. We've got a penalty. Who's taking it? I changed the penalty taker. I think it is still Sanchez because I don't think my, my two first choice penalty... Actually, no, it will be Ojeda, won't it? Yeah, Ojeda. Oh, my God. Oh. Oh. I changed it before the game. Are you joking me, Ojeda? I was just about to take you off and you've got an... Oh. Are you joking me? Things like that. I know you people regret things like that. Especially in cup competitions like this. Penalty misses are crucial. You always look back and go, that's the that's where the you know you could have won the game. That's where you could have changed the outcome. Oh no no fucking deflection. God damn it. Ah. Uh, 
pause the game quickly. I don't want to pause the highlight. I want to pause the game. Push forward. Oh, chasing the ball down there, Gregory. Unable to get the ball. I think this will just be the end highlight, though. I don't think we're going to get a chance from this. In fact, they may even get a chance from this. Brilliant ball. Forward from the goalkeeper. Long shot. Ends up coming to nothing. And it'll be the, that'll be the end of the game. 2-0. If we'd have scored that penalty, I'm honest to God, I'm not even lying. I would have probably shut up shop. Would have probably put an extra guy in defence, taken a striker off. <sighs> For Ojeda to miss that penalty, I can't believe it. The thing is, I will show you his penalty taking stats as well. Penalty taking a 12, composure of 12. If I go on my squad, or go on my tactic, I should say, and then, and then go on my set pieces and penalties, he is the second best penalty taker in this team, arguably. I took Sanchez off it. He, Sanchez was, was first choice. Who? Ah. Regrets. You shouldn't have any, but regrets. Either way, second leg. Still win with a fighting chance. Didn't look completely out of the game in the first leg. Maybe at home we can play better. Who knows? Okay, guys. So, here's the second leg. And you know what? I'm a little optimistic going into it. Despite the fact we missed that penalty in the last leg. You know, despite the fact we could have ended this first leg with a 1-1 draw and an away goal. Even a 2-1 defeat and an away goal would have been really good. But we're going to this game knowing we weren't too bad against Tel Aviv. And we had a few chances. If we had taken them, we would have, or could have, potentially have won the game. Okay, if they'd have taken all their chances, they would have whooped us. But we'll ignore that fact for now and we'll talk about that. But I think we've got a good chance in this game. I've slightly changed the tactic a little. The team shape has now gone too fluid. And we've taken off, we've taken off whip crosses. But apart from that, and also uh, one change to the role, it was a target man attack role this. We changed it to target man support. Sanchez is playing that and Gregory is still playing advanced forward. Um, so, let's go into this. Let's see what we can do. Apart from that, it's an unchanged team in all, all areas, both on pitch and off pitch, for example, the bench. So, let's see what we can do. So, they've gone out there with a 5-3-2 again. Uh, let's apply your advice and then we'll do this. So here we go, Gibraltar United, Tel Aviv. Whoever scores first will dictate this tie. If we score first, it will be a quite tense game, nervy game. If Tel Aviv score first, it will be game over pretty much and it will surely turn into a riot. Or a rout, sorry, not a riot. <laughs> and you know, what? we've started the game really brightly. We've got a lot of ball, but um, as of yet to create a clear cut opportunity. And actually, the half has flown by. Let's change it to control. We're controlling this game quite a bit. Let's change it to that. Free kick. I'm surprised there's no highlight. Come on, lads. Much better showing in the second half. Look all fired up. Let's go out there and beat these bastards. Come on. Baldwin, don't get sent off, please. Okay. <laughs> I know I want, I want a, bit of, a, a bit of passion and stuff, but come on, lads. You know, keep it, keep it moderate if you can. Since we've gone, ah oh no, 30 minutes remaining, nothing's happened. Coling, you're going to come on, I guess. Moody, you can go off, not play particularly well. Baldwin, I don't really want to see you getting send off, so we're going to bring Terry Brown on. Triple substitution at 30 minutes remaining. Going attacking as well. I'm going for it. We've got to get two goals in 30 minutes. The only way we're going to do that is if we actually go out there and try and score. Not sit back and defend and hope that we can get a chance here or there. So here's Owens with the ball, pretty much instantly as soon as he comes on. Or came on. Oh my god. Trying to cross the ball. Switch flanks. I oh, know. Won the ball back actually. We could maybe do something with this. Sanchez to Ojeda who missed the penalty obviously. Owens. Out on that left hand side. He looks like he's beat his man. He's still going down that left hand side. If he can maybe look to whip the ball in. He does. Far post. Oh my god. How did Sanchez not score? Oh my god. I was about to celebrate. How did Sanchez not bury that? He normally buries them in other games. I don't get it. Well it is with the Champions League. My players just aren't playing well. They're just not taking their chances when they come, but yet yeah, in the Gibraltarian Premier in the Gibraltar Premier League, bang, that's a goal, bang, that's a goal, bang, that's a goal. It's just so simple for them. Overload, last 13 minutes of the game. It's been a very boring second leg. But we've got to go for it. You know what? Team talk as well. Passionately push forward. It should probably be pointless now. Yeah, pointless. <laughs> they scored. They scored. And that's us out of the tournament. Oh, we had to get one of the tougher teams. We had to miss that penalty. We had to waste our chances. 
I wouldn't be surprised if this uh, we fall apart a little now. Oh my god! I say I thought he was going to score due to the fact the defender let the ball go through. Brown winning. Oh, I just say Brown winning the ball back could maybe get a goal, equalise this game up, get a draw on the leg. But I don't think it's going to happen. In fact, this looks like it's going to be two. Good challenge there. Actually, really good challenge. Coling with a ball with the ball. Play it to Sanchez. Play it out wide. He does see the ball out wide to Alvaro. Whip this one in. Plays the ball to Sanchez. Ah, oh, another chance missed. Ojeda with the corner. At least he can direct his corners, Goldwoods, unlike his penalties. <laughs> I will not live that down. That is one of them moments you regret. Like me last season playing the wrong formation. Ah, oh, they score again. But me playing the wrong formation in the first leg, I regret that. This year, I... Uh, this year, it's just really we played a better team, I think. We didn't play particularly well in the first leg. Really, not not anything spectacular. This game either, we're not exactly playing well. We've missed chances. You know, two click opportunities wasted. Three half chances not taken either. You could argue that we, you know, should have scored. But our strikers weren't on it for the day. Especially Sanchez, who I'm relying a lot on today. Due to the fact um, Castro's out injured. And he's not lived up. If only we may, you know, a lot of what ifs we've lost today, but a lot of what ifs are currently surrounding me. What if my two players who are currently out injured, my left back and my striker, what if they had been in, what if they'd been fit and we'd have played these guys? Would we have scored a few more goals? Would we have conceded all them goals? I don't care about Coling, he rarely plays anyway. What if I hadn't have changed the penalty taker? Would we have won that game? Would we, you know, would we have scored that penalty? So many ifs, so many what's, but sadly we were, we'll never find out. So we've got £906,000 in the bank. Now, that's not really sustainable. And the reason I say that is because last year we lost around £500,000. And that is a lot of money to lose. So theoretically, we're projected around £300,000, £200,000 at the end of the season. Which means we really do need to be getting past this stage. But the performances we put in, I, the thing is, we've lost 2-0 on both occasions. But look, we... We weren't great going forward. Yes, that that's a bad thing. We missed the penalty. Of course, that's tragic. Didn't play too badly. Didn't look like we were getting dominated. I mean, okay, they had 24 shots, but we were holding our own with the ball at our feet. And, you know, in the second leg, arguably we should have won that game. But, of course, I had to go for the win. I'm not going to just sit back, roll over, and let a 0-0 draw pass by. I'm going to try and go for a 1-0, 2-0 victory and try and get through. As a result, they were able to score two goals due to the change of uh, mentality, which I don't regret. You know, <laughs> I'd rather go out trying than go out, like I say, whimpering, cowering in the corner, hoping not to concede again. But yeah, it's so frustrating. And the thing is, if we have a, let's have a look at who actually went through. Who went through from the second qualifying phase, who we potentially could have played. Now, we could have played Dynamo. They won three 0 on aggregate, only due to a, um, only due to the second leg. Maribor, they won four 0 We could have got them, I believe. Um, who else could we have got? I think we could have got Apole. They only went through narrowly, and they drew, they just about beat a team from Macedonia. Now I think we I think we could do that. You know, I think we could beat certain players. Or certain uh, team, sorry, in this stage. It's just we need the draw to be a little bit favourable. Last year when we played TNS, that was my fault. I was, that was my bad. In fact, this year, have a look. TNS have... Um, look at that. TNS have beaten Basel. Where are Basel? Basel, Basel. Look at that. They beat them. Wow. How have they managed to do that? TNS are growing quite quickly. Where did they get last year? Where did they, where did they qualify through last year? Third qualifying phase and they lost in the playoffs. Okay, but they look, they lost to Basel last year. They just beat them this year in the second qualifying phase. They now play AIK. I don't want to attend that game. They now play AIK from Sweden. And really, I wouldn't fear them because Basel were a really tough team. But yeah, we, you know, we were bad last year. We should have really gone through. And if we'd have played TNS this year, with the, well, last year with the squad we had this year, I'm, there's no doubt in my mind we would have gone through. And really, to me, despite the fact we've not gone through, and despite the fact that's not great, that's not really sustainable, we need to be getting third qualifying phase minimum from now on, really. 
we've we've improved. You know, we've we've looked better. Okay, last time we played Tel Aviv, we we lost one 0 in a very plucky game, and we we lost what was it four 0 or five 0 in the first leg. This time round, you you could argue we deserve something out of both games. You could also argue we don't, but we you could argue we do. So. Signs of improvement, I guess. That's that's something we have to take. Plus the money, of course. We'll always take the money. Um, next time I'll meet you back will be midway through the season. Uh, I will continue to look to try and improve this team. Uh, Position-wise, it'll probably be the centre of the park. I still want to get another player to replace Baldwin. And also another... I don't know, actually, not another striker. I don't know. It's quite hard. But yeah, I'll probably be looking for a centre mid to replace Baldwin. And as you can see, a lot of people's contracts expire at the end of the season. Oh, but I don't want to do that. A lot of people's contracts, they expire. And um, what that means is I'll be scouting people to maybe potentially replace them. So, for example, what I mean is I'll look at the centre-backs. Both centre-backs will currently have their contract expiring at the end of the year. I'll scout centre-backs and consider who I could bring in to potentially replace them in maybe January or the end of the season. But it definitely won't happen now. Same with sort of like um, right back and right mid. Could I find a better right back and right mid in six months' time, 12 months' time? Maybe. As a result, will I sign him down to new deals? Definitely not right away. So we could still be growing. That's obviously the aim. We're going to want to continue to grow because the growth has been quite quite su substantial for the past 12 months. But we need to continue to grow, continue to push. And maybe next year we could even be, you know, I think, because I have a feeling if we were beating Tel Aviv today, who did Tel Aviv actually get in the third? It was. I don't think it was a particularly hard draw. Um, because if we can get past this second qualifying phase, if we can beat a team like this, look at that, they played AFC, they're playing AFC Astra from uh, Romania. That's actually quite a tough team. But I feel if we could have beaten them, we'd go into the third qualifying phase, no fear, knowing that we've achieved what we had to achieve. And then I feel, you know, once we get past the, f the second qualifying phase, we have a really good chance of getting past the third qualifying phase, then we could potentially be in the playoffs. So it's just about breaking down this hurdle. And I think we're almost there. I honestly do. I think we are almost there. Next season, if we don't get past this stage, I'll probably cry a little. <laughs> Until next time, guys. Either way, peace out.